Everyone knows that a strong portfolio can help you land that first or second or third job in tech. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about five tips for building amazing portfolio projects that you can talk about on your resume and in your interviews. What's up everyone. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Q quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And we talk a lot about JavaScript. We talk a lot about VS code, but in this video, we're going to talk more about a uh, career in building portfolio projects. Now, if you're looking to transition into tech, if you're looking to get your first job in tech, if you're looking to get your second or third, you've probably heard the advice over and over again, have a really strong portfolio or a couple of different portfolio projects that you can talk about in your interviews and on your resume. Now for me, I'll give you an example of this in my career. When I was coming out of college, I was interviewing with Microsoft, one of the top tech companies in the world. And the thing that I talked about in 90% of those conversations was this Harry Potter mobile app that I built for Android. Now, the reason this was a good thing for me to be able to talk about was it was something beyond what was required of me in school. It wasn't a homework assignment. It's something that I did on my own. It proved that I was passionate about it. It proved that I could learn and it proved that I could actually build something that other people could use. And it was actually deployed to the store and like wildly got over 30,000 downloads or something over the course of several years. But still, like I thought that was really cool. And that's what I talked about in 90% of my interviews and my conversations with one of the top tech companies in the world in Microsoft. So don't underestimate how far your portfolio of projects can take you. So let's go ahead and dive in with number one. And number one tip here is, actually these are not in any specific order. This is just the first one that we're doing. But number one is to create something that you can use. Now, a lot of people really struggle with, well, I, I know I need to build a portfolio project, but I, I don't know what to build. And they say, what, what should I build? And there's a million different things that you could build. Um, but I think it's really cool if you can build something for yourself because multiple reasons, if you can decide on something that you can use, if you can build something that solves a problem for you, you're gonna be more excited about it because it's something you will actually use and get an advantage from. Maybe other people could use it, maybe they won't, but you'll be able to tell that story if this is something that I benefited from. Also, as you go through and work on this, one of the open questions a lot of times is like, what sort of functionality should I add to a project? And the cool thing is like, you can answer that question directly. So you don't have to wait for outside validation. You don't have to kind of make things up. You can actually solve a realistic use case for yourself. Have yourself be the customer, provide yourself feedback on what should be in there and what it should look like. And that goes a really, really long way. So I think this is kind of more of a mental aspect of this, of just like giving you a way to get started, narrowing the scope of what you should build based on what you need. But also I think because it's something that you'll use and because I think you'll be more inclined to work on that, you're more likely to finish it to a state that we'll talk about here in a minute. And it's more likely to be something that you will be excited to share about in an interview because the way you talk about your projects actually goes a long way. If you say, oh, I just built a thing and it, it doesn't do a whole lot, but it, it's this. That's not as impactful as I built this thing, it solves this problem for me and I use these technologies to do it. That's a pretty impactful story that you can tell. All right, number two here is to create good documentation or more specifically create a good readme for your project. Now, when people go and look at the projects, if you list these inside of your resume and you have a link to a GitHub repository, employers are gonna go actually look at that repository and a couple of things they want to know about that is, did you document it at all? Did you create a readme so that other people know how this thing works? And then they wanna know kind of at a glance, what technologies did you use? What features did you use? And then maybe, I'm not saying this will happen very often, maybe that employer could check out your code and then run it themselves, depending on like how complicated the environment and stuff like that is. But this is a good way to prove to them that this is something that is real. Like you've actually not only put in thought into the code itself, but also what if other people want to use this? What, what if other people want to leverage it? And then you help ease that clarity or add clarity to employers that are looking at this. And a big part of this, I think, is specifying the technologies and the platforms and the products that you use to build this thing. That's what I look at for me in resumes. It's like a lot of people build projects. I'm interested in what you use to build it. And most importantly, conversationally in an interview, can you explain to me what those different pieces are and how they fit together? That's the one thing that I feel like a lot of people in interviews are missing is they, they wanna act like they know everything. They wanna pretend like they know everything. 
but you don't have to. But for the things that you've built, the things that you've told me you've gained knowledge from, make sure you're really comfortable with how those pieces of the application fit together and what technologies you're using. So having that good documentation, having that readme can help clarify that. It shows that you've got some thought into your project. It shows that you take it a little more seriously than some of the other people who might have a project, but no readme and it just, it, it's not really a good look. So make sure you add a good readme with some good documentation on what it is, what you did, what features are there, what technologies you used, and how other people could run this project too if they wanted to. All right, tip number three here is to deploy your project. So source code, a GitHub repository is, is only so interesting. It's not really, it's not really proof that you know what you're doing. Like you could have copied and pasted, you could have started with a starter project. That's not to say that that doesn't have value, but it's not a whole lot of proof. What's really interesting to me is not only did you write code, but I want to see the working demo because here's the thing. I'm not going to go through your project, your source code on GitHub and, and really dissect it and try to run it myself. Now I talked about they might, so it's good to have the documentation, but most likely I'm not going to do that. So how do you actually prove that the code that you have in this GitHub repository works? Well, deploy the thing and then show, let me interact with that app. That's much easier for me to uh, be able to kind of validate that this thing is real than just the code behind it. Not to say that the code isn't valuable because it absolutely is, but seeing that thing be deployed at a real live domain, that's next level. I think that's one of the things that I had on my side with my Harry Potter app was that thing was deployed to the Android store. They could pull up their Android phone and search for that thing and see, wow, that's, that's legit. So regardless of mobile app versus website, go ahead and deploy that thing. And the cool thing is it's never been easier to deploy a full stack application, a front end application, things like Netlify and Vercel, things like serverless functions, things like the Jamstack. If these are words that you're not familiar with, you can check out other videos on my channel or just go and do some research yourself. But deploying your applications has never been easier. On that same vein, if you have a project that you have deployed that you've talked about in your resumes and or your interviews, send that link in the comments below. I'd love to see some of the stuff that you all have built but make sure that you take this thing all the way to fruition, that you have some sort of endpoint, that you have some sort of deployed product that people can see and they can use. All right, tip number four is to make it full stack. Now, this is not a universal thing. I think if you 100% if you know you only wanna be a front-end developer, hey, build a front-end project. If you 100% know you only wanna work on the back-end and on APIs, cool, do that. But my general advice for people, especially early on in their career, and especially for getting their first job, is to learn front end and back end and how to build full stack applications. I think early on, you, you probably don't know which one of these areas you love the most. And a lot of people like myself enjoy doing full stack anyway. So my recommendation for making this full stack is so that you get this broader range of experience. Going back to me saying, it's really important that people understand how these different pieces connect. You have a front end React application that makes API calls to a node back end. The node API gets triggered. It calls a database to get some information. It uses that to respond back to the React application. And then it displays the, the new data, whatever it is on, uh, on the front end. Telling that full stack story is very, very impactful. Now, even if you want to be front end and you don't really want to do back end, you will be a better front end developer by understanding what goes into back end development understanding the other side. The same goes for if you want to do back end and understanding a little bit about the front end. The same goes for if you're a designer and you want to work with developers, understanding a little bit of development helps you become a better designer. So understanding full stack to me is what I highly recommend to people unless you already absolutely know you only want to do one or another. It's going to make you a better developer overall. It's going to make you more knowledgeable about how applications work and it's going to make you a better hire for employers that are looking to hire developers. All right, here's the last one. Tip number five is to put some effort into design. Make it look pretty. Now, this is this is kind of a weird one because it's the design and the, the prettiness uh, and the functionality, the functionality is important, but the design and the prettiness specifically is not the is not the most important thing, especially as a developer, like as a developer, you're not going to be most likely responsible for actually designing something. That would be someone else's job and your job would be to implement that design. But when employers, including myself, look at projects that have good documentation, that solve a real world problem, that are deployed in our full stack, as they look at that thing at that deployed URL, 
the subconscious bias of looking at something that is very pleasing to the eye that looks like it's a real modern designed well application that bias is real and it's kind of unfortunate again this is this is not the thing that tells you whether or not you're a good developer it's not the thing that proves to them whether or not you're a good developer but it does help overcome some of that bias that employers including myself in previous situations can have just based on the way it looks so does design need to be the number one thing that you pay attention to no is it is it where you're going to spend the majority of your time no you're going to spend the time writing code but try to make that end product look decent for lack of a better word and there's nothing wrong with using something like bootstrap or tailwind css or mimicking a style of an existing site absolutely do that use those tools to make that process easy for you to create something that not only functions not only is deployed but also looks good to a potential interviewer as they're looking at your content or your portfolio projects that you have created all right, so those are my top five tips for building amazing portfolio projects. If you feel like I missed anything or if you have any tips that you would like to add to this, make sure to throw those in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got value out of it, but that's gonna do it for this video. So in the meantime, I will catch you later.